perfect that's great thank you very much don um michael would you like to jump off mute and say yes. hello to everybody thank you right you're welcome and thank you for this and thank you for starting this whole thing off in the first place so uh my name is michael pila i live in tenafly new jersey which is like 20 minutes from new york city the name of my company is clicks for ticks it's a new company uh, and it's basically di drama free digital marketing for the arts. Uh, one of the reasons I joined ACN was since it's a new company, I'm looking to meet new people. I'm looking to get this thing off the ground. And I've actually made two clients uh, in Europe uh, as a result of participating in this in this organization. Uh, and Mark keeps it very light. It's always a lot of fun. Even people who are not clients are interesting. So I met a lot of great people. Um, and it's it's nice to actually meet some people now who are in the U.S. So maybe networking or getting together would be a lot easier. So again, thank you, Mark, and uh, to, the, to all the new people, welcome. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, Joey, hello again, Joey. We had a, fun, a really fun time last week recording some some videos for publication. I should point out that when when somebody joins as a full member, we we record a, a series of videos one or two perhaps um that i can then gradually publish to linkedin as as a way of raising awareness so um joey and i did one of those um and there's more to come um and i'm gradually working my way through people i should i should point out we yes. while we have twenty one thousand linkedin group members we have over near, approaching a thousand registered um users of the website now about 80 of whom are full members subscribing so um, there are quite a few of those to get through to help promote that mm. because my gig and then I have Sarah to thank for this because she taught me I was selling the wrong things. <laughs> um, mm. My job really as the leader of this community at the hub of 21,000 people is to is to help our members grow their own networks, careers and or businesses by providing enhanced and supported access to the network and to my own network. I started using LinkedIn quite shortly after it started, so I'm 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 blessed with quite a following, which is which is great, and I use that to make useful introductions for our members. So, so that's that. So sorry, I've I've stolen your your time, Joey. Go go ahead. <laughs> well, as always, uh, thank you, Mark, for just uh, pulling this together. I uh, um in Western Massachusetts, I'm in Northampton, home of five colleges, and uh, recently moved here from Boston. I do creative branding and communications for nonprofits and small businesses. I spent 25 years in advertising and then started a Jewish music festival in Boston, which I ran for a dozen years. And now I'm uh, I'm living in farmland, and it's a whole different life, uh, not what I ever expected. Um, and this group has been very important to me. I found it when I first went on my own uh, two years ago. And um, so being in Boston at the time and with the prim primarily European context, um, it was really just a great reminder of an opportunity to meet really interesting people. So. Uh, now that we're in America, we should be even more interesting, I hope. So uh, I look forward to it. That's great, Joey, thank you. And could I ask the, the remaining, um, other than Don, Michael and Joey, um, could you raise a digital hand if you're one of our full members? Because I know we've got um, some here um, and click the little hand so that I can identify you or a heart if you prefer um there we go yep yeah. oh farah thank you for the heart um farah um is an abstract artist and educator and does amazing workshops with people with um visual impairment and this is ruby is it farah yeah this is one of her pieces um farah would you like to pop off um mute and say hello to everyone Hi everybody, um, great to meet you all. Um, so yeah, I'm Farah Syed, I'm based in London and um, I create very uniquely um, uh, unique art in the way that you interact with it. I won't go into all the details, but 
I'm very passionate about making art accessible to all, um, and especially to the blind community globally. So I've delivered my workshops to many organizations, museums, and um, educational institutions, and have um, seen firsthand how art transcends barriers of language, um, culture, age, disability, among many others. And I love making that impact on people and, in, um, and empowering people through art in many different ways. But yeah, I'll leave it as that for now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Thank you very much. Carol. I should point out my two dogs have started barking on the windowsill. So this is a real mm. test of the um the noise suppression that Zoom offers. So I apologize if you can hear them um or if I swear out loud. Um uh, can I come to Vicky? Vicky, thank you so much for joining us. Um uh you were we had a session at lunchtime UK today, which was great, and Vicky was on that as well. Um, where are you, Vicky? You look as though you're in transit. I'm sitting by the side of a road outside my daughter's piano school. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a lesson until go. seven o'clock, so we're, we're okay. Uh, you, you know how to live. You know <laughs> yeah. how to live. Would you like to introduce yourself? This is a bit of a, a marathon for, for you guys today. You've been at both um, both of the events today. Um, I was also at a I breakfast in person networking as well this morning. So it's oh a my cool Lord. day of it. Wow. Yeah. I have <laughs> yes, world I'm... domination in mind. So I was my my <laughs> day was going to be um at some point I'd like to do a, an Australia a Sydney, a one for Sydney, one for Dubai, one for the UK, and then one for 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 the for the Americas, which that's going to be quite a day if I did it all on the same day. But God, um, yeah. And then my pipe dream would be to come and visit you guys at your places of work or homes or studios or galleries um, and and host host from there, because as long as you've got Wi-Fi, we can do this anywhere, which would be that would be great fun. <laughs> um, Vicky, sorry, would you like to tell us more about um, you? I keep stealing everybody's time. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm based in the UK. Um, I've had a graphic design business for 20 years. Um, within the graphic design business, I do a lot of brand identity work and I also coach other designers within their businesses as well. So I work with um, graphic designers in particular, but other creative disciplines and help them find their mojo again, in a nutshell. Great, thank you very much. And can I come to Sarah? Uh, it's good to see you again, Sarah. Thanks for joining Hello, us. Hello, indeed, indeed. What a marathon. This is brilliant. I love meeting everybody here and seeing some funny faces from this morning. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I've been a creative business coach for the last three years, um, but I'm now uh, transitioning and, and um, developing a new social media tool for new businesses that are trying to get visibility online because I found that I was spending most of my time marketing the business, trying to get visibility and people to engage in my work rather than actually doing the coaching stuff that I love. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that as well. So I'm developing this tool on the side. I'm going to be beta testing it this summer. So any Anyone that wants to get involved and have a bit of fun, answer a few surveys and questions and things like that, um, please shoot me a line either on LinkedIn or here um, and we can get cracking and get something pretty cool out there. So that's me. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Sarah. I should point out that the, um, the time that you and I spent together um, were by far and away the standout sessions that I've ever done with any one in any kind of coaching capacity it's, it was it was really illuminating I love the way that you challenged me you asked me what I wanted to be doing in the year's time and describe it in some detail um, especially what I didn't want to be doing and then you asked me for one word that was stopping me from doing that and it was guilt because of all of the people I might have to let down if I could if I wanted to focus on the arts and culture network solely because like many of us here I think I've got several income streams and different responsibilities and that was a, it was great and we're getting there because I've, I've dropped some clients for, since since our call which is great thank you very much um right how are we doing for time we're good um what I think we'll do now if that's okay have I missed anybody have I missed um anyone who is one of our full members um I don't believe so but um so let's go around now this is why I get confused and miss people out by mistake so I'm going to see if the, if my zoom um 
stays where it should do with everybody um, and come around and invite you all to just, um, in, if you'd like to, just to say hi, a uh, couple of minutes, um, so that we all get to know a little bit more about each other and how we might be able to help. I've, I've spotted a, a, at least one meeting request in the chat, which is fantastic. Um, this really is the, the hour during, this is the spark of the whole process. My job is really to just give you the opportunity to connect so that you can start a conversation and see if it's worth continuing and see if there are opportunities for, for collaboration. And, and if there are, and there is, do please let me know because if it started here, we'd like to know about it. Um, excellent. Um, can I come to Alan? It's good to see you again. I know you've joined us before, that's very kind. Um, and I'm all over you, you on LinkedIn. Um, so um, would you like to introduce yourself to anyone? Is there anyone here you've already met, by the way? Oh, Farah, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure I've met more of you. I just remember Farah more. Right. <laughs> because I get to see her art every Monday, among other things. <laughs> of course. Monday inspiration, yeah. I, Monday I motivation, that. yes. Monday motivation, that's you know, it. You have to do the, uh, yeah, the alliterative uh, thing there. Yeah. You know, I'm, she's very I'm smart. I should have, I should have got that right, really. But <laughs> yeah, do do follow Farah on on um, LinkedIn if you get the chance for for some Monday motivation, which is which is great. Um, Alan, would you like to in, say hello and introduce yourself to us? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Alan Harrison. I'm based in the Greater Seattle area, which is why I never attend the uh, the, the what you call the lunchtime talks because that's five a.m. for me and. Uh, I only know one five o'clock per day, and that's not the one. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I've recently finished a book. I worked in the arts, uh, running arts organizations, directing them, and serving as a board member on them, and all of that stuff for about 30 years. I've since written a book. Uh, the book is going to be uh, officially released on uh, January 26th in the UK and February 1st in the US. And you can check with John Hunt Publishing. Um, they have uh, they they really wanted this book, and it is a brick through the window of arts organizations uh, across America to remind them that they are charities first, and happen to be arts organizations to um, implement the good that they do for society rather than just the good that they do for themselves. And uh, Many, many, at least here in the States, are guilty of doing art for art's sake. Um, I try to remind them that that was actually just a movement back in France and whenever, and it was about uh, doing art for the purpose of art rather than for the purpose of the government or the church. We're not in that position right now. Uh, so doing art for art's sake is a little selfish and uh, doesn't really help the community eat or clothe itself or whatever. Uh, the basic premise of the book is that the elitism that has happened in the arts has been, is a result of the arts being the only part of the nonprofit sector where the uh, donor is also the user. So the donor donates so that the donor may attend. That's wrong uh, in many ways. It's elitist, it's immoral, it's all of those things. And I have some ways to fix it in the book. So uh, I invite, I put the, uh, the link to the to the video that that I've put together for the book it's one minute long if you can stand one minute uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll get a laugh out of it I do and um, yeah so that's what I've been doing I'm also working on book two right now so there you go that's great Alan thank you very much um, certainly I'll quickly come to um, I'll quickly come to Hannah if I may um, while my dog is barking um, Hannah, would you like to say hello to everyone? Alan, thank you very much. Hello, can you, can you guys hear me? Okay, sometimes this doesn't work. Okay, cool. Um, and pardon the, there is a lawnmower in the background at the worst time as always, um, but I am from Michigan. I'm an abstract artist and a poet, and I explore themes of uh, identity and specifically post-traumatic stress disorder. And I try to explore that throughout my work. So I'm very interested in working with anybody or talking with anybody who is in the neuroscience industry or uh, the science industry in general. 
And um, I found this group just by jumping on LinkedIn and I just typed in arts organizations and it's, I've met a lot of really great people here and I'm excited to finally meet some people in the Americas because any of the meetings that were coming up, they were completely different time zones as the other guy was just saying. So um, it's very nice to meet all of you for the first time. So, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hannah, and you're very, very welcome. I, 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 I'd sort of not challenge, I'd like invite you um, all to decide whether you think we should do this again um, during the course of the next half hour, because I've got a, 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 a spot that I, I think we might do, which is this time on the second Thursday every month might work quite well. So um, I'll be sending out a poll. In fact, I'll do a poll. Um, in fact, it's one of those polls where you're asking the wrong people because you're brilliant. You've turned up. Um, it's the people who haven't come who said they were coming um, who I should be asking because that's probably um, a, some better insights. But please, or perhaps pop something in the chat if we don't get a chance to do the poll. Just if we were to do one uh, this monthly free for an hour with an after party, possibly with a tad talk at half time um, with a growing number of people, would you be? Um, interested in, in in coming, that would be good to know. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to come now to the wonderful Richard Crossman. Uh, Richard and I have, have met before on one-to-ones, which is fantastic. Richard um, ha is, is an extremely good Santa Claus um, and, and recorded a welcome message for our network, which is beautiful. That's very kind of you, Richard. So um, I know that's not what all you do because you don't, sort of twiddle your thumbs for the rest of the year. So um, would you like to say hello and, and let us know more about the work you're doing for a couple of minutes? Hi, everybody. Uh, Richard Crossman here. Um, and I, too, was in a networking group in the UK at 7.30 this morning. So it's it's been a long day. Um, I'm a voice actor. I'm a Canadian voice actor based, in, based between Toronto and Niagara Falls in Canada. Working in e-learning, medical narration, documentaries, corporate narration and explainers, commercial and telephony and IVR, non-fiction audiobooks and more. I have a variety of accents and dialects which I can bring to any project. And at the appropriate time of the year, I portray Santa, Father Christmas and Father Frost at live events, online virtual visits and video Christmas messages for family and businesses. I'm also a retired pastry chef and a costume designer for film and television. I don't want you to stop. I think that's that you're the, you're the polymath in the room, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Richard. Thank you so much. I, I, I think next year, I've got a one-year-old grandchild now, so um, by this time next year, I think she's going to be a customer of yours for a, a personalised um, uh, visit, because I know you do it live on Zoom, don't you? You just appear yes. and it, it's fantastic. I love yep. that. It's brilliant. Uh, and thank you for joining us again earlier today. That, that, was, that was great. Thank you. Um, can I now say hello to Anjali? Would you like to say hello, Anjali? I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Yeah, um, my name is Anjali. Um, I'm from, I'm a recent graduate with an arts administration degree from Indiana University, but I'm originally from India. Um, I am passionate about, like actually passionate about arts and culture and I was, I happened across this group on LinkedIn and I found out that this was happening and it is so great to meet all of you. Um, I am looking forward to talking to all of you, connecting with all of you. Um, yeah, happy to be here. That's great, Anjali, thank you very much. Maji, will you please stop barking? Can, you, can anyone hear the dog, by the way? Or is, no, that's great. Oh. Oh, oh, I don't know. Some can. Andre, can I come to you next, please, to say hello? Hello, everyone. My name is Andre Brown, and I am based in uh, Miami, Florida. The first thing I have to say is, Richard, I thought I was hallucinating as you're going through your voices. I was like, the inflection's changing, the voice is changing. So very interesting, very interesting. Uh, I am a 
a uh, both an artist and a coach. I am a fine art and uh, and documentary photographer. I also am a coach, and so the one of the biggest reasons why I I, I wanted to connect with people uh, here on at ACN is that. I am, you know, in terms of my my coaching, I do leadership coaching. I also do DEIB, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging coaching. And it's interesting because as you were talking, Alan, I was thinking about, you know, you you mentioned how you know the arts organizations need to have more of a social presence in terms of giving back to the community, or at least that's what I thought you were saying. And it's and and that's what I'm hoping to do through my coaching is to be able to connect with uh, arts organizations, uh, cultural organizations to help them to be better for its patrons and to be to to be more inclusive. And uh, so I'm I'm really excited. This is my second time here. I notice I, I see a few uh, a few uh, people that I've um, connected with. See Sarah, we we talked. She's not too far from from us, and uh, also I see that there's a couple of people from New England, which is where I'm from originally. So uh, I'm I'm excited to be a part of what what goes on here, and um, I think that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre, and, and welcome back. It's good to see you again, and I'm loving the shirt. I've got I've got shirt envy going on here, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, could I come to Jenny now, please? Jenny, would you like to um, pop off mute and say hello? And thank you for joining us. Sure. Yes, yes. Thank you for having us. I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been seeing all of the meetings come up and I'm like all the way in the West Coast. So 5 a.m. is a little bit hard for me to make, but happy to be here. So thank you, Mark, uh, for putting this together. I'm excited for our one-on-one -on -one to get to know each other as well. Um, I did have a one-on-one -on -one with, with Sarah, so that's great to see, see her on here as well. Um, yes, hi. So um, I'm Jenny, and I am a digital marketing specialist. Um, I work in organic social media, also paid advertising, um, and I do freelance work uh, to help arts organizations, so mainly performing arts organizations. Um, I am also a performing artist. I'm an opera singer, um, and I continue that as well, even here in the West Coast. Um, and I'm also an entrepreneur um, and co-founder of the Opera Dolls. So be sure to check us out. We actually created 12 inch plush dolls just with their belly and they sing opera. So uh, we've got three characters right now and we really want to turn it into a music education company. Um, and the link is up there if you want to take a look. But that's what I'm interested in is connecting with everyone here. I think I saw this group on LinkedIn. Um, would love to be you know, connected with you for collaboration, any insights, um, advice, things like that, because networking is, is really the key to growing any type of business and arts organization. So that's, uh, that's why I'm here. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Jenny. A couple of us have had to leave um, a little bit early. So if any, I've got three, I think, um, we, uh, people we haven't heard from yet, Lisa, Jonathan, and Michael. If if either of you have got to dash off, raise a hand so that you can go first. But um, otherwise, we'll work our way through it. Yeah, I, Jenny, just while you've made me think, I, I read somewhere that something like 85%, um, this might just be in the UK, something like 85% of those work, people working in the creative industries or arts and culture are now freelancing or contracting, um, which is an interesting development, for, certainly for the UK. Um, which rather makes having a network of people who understand where your value lies increasingly important, especially one like this, because what we've found is that the people who the there are, yes, there are lots of um, members on our LinkedIn group, but many of them have never engaged with anyone else on the LinkedIn group. They probably, like many of us, just thought, oh, that looks interesting, I'll join it. Um, but what we're finding is that there is a kind of funnel effect now so so you've got people who've joined the LinkedIn group but never posted you've got people who who have posted on the LinkedIn group and commented you've got people who do that quite frequently um, and respond to and to other people other members posts 
and then we have the the those who are who attend an event and those who attend an event tend to develop closer relationships um, and provide opportunities to for uh, reach into each other's networks. This has already happened for Sarah and me um, because uh, the, you know I was somebody leapt to mind and I thought, oh yes, that would be somebody who 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 Sarah would really like to meet. Um, and it worked and I think she became a client, didn't she? Yep, I'm getting nods, which is great, um, which which is just fantastic. So yeah, that, that, that's why you're absolutely right, Jenny. These um, a significant number of um, opportunities, whether those be contracts, opportunities to perform, commissions, partnerships, that, that there tend to be there tends to be a referral in there somewhere. <laughs> um, it's 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 the way, um, and so. If, I mean, think of your think of the last few opportunities that you might have picked up, um, and were and did they start with a referral or an introduction? And the, the answer is probably yes these days, which means um, uh, fora like this are increasingly important. So, thank you, Jenny. Um, I'd like to come now to Michael. Please, would you like to pop off mute and say hi? Yeah. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All good. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was at one of these I think a year ago. Uh, I can't remember, but um, no, it was really good last time. But yeah, I'm Michael. I'm based in Ireland. I'm a recent graduate, so I study music at Edinburgh University. Um, and my main passion is sort of writing and composing music and and sound production as well as what I did in my final year of uni. But um, obviously, it's quite difficult to make a living off of that. So um, just trying to find my feet at the minute in the kind of postgraduate uh, market, but um, applying for lots of jobs and sort of um, arts organizations, um, music charities and stuff have become quite passionate about like democratizing music for lots of people. I think that's kind of loosely the direction I'd like to go in, um, but I'm applying for lots of arts adjacent stuff. So I don't have an extensive background of experience just yet, but yeah, it's lovely to be here and meet everyone. That's great. Michael, look, we should probably have a one-to-one -one because I've helped a number of people in similar situations. Yeah. Um, there's a link in the chat or on the homepage of our website if you'd like to book that up because I think- Yeah, that would be great, great. yeah. One of the things I will share with you briefly is the, ki is the, is the killer question to ask at the end of an interview, right? Yeah. Um, it works on contracts as well. And if you're interviewing or meeting somebody with a view to working together, yeah. um, I'll share it with you briefly because it's helped me so many times. Quite often when you get to the end of an interview or a pitch or a presentation meeting, you'll be asked if you have any questions for the panel. And mm -hmm. um, what I always ask is the following. I, I normally say the following and the panel tends to be perhaps three people, two or three people, one of whom is, is the lead of the panel um, in big pitches. Um, I say, yes, if you don't mind, um, this might be the last time I have the opportunity to reassure you. And I assume you're either ticking boxes or not against the criteria you have set for this role or this <laughs> job. Um, could you please tell me now if I have failed to reassure you of my suitability and my capability in each of those areas? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. it's a win-win question you cannot lose, right? So. Yeah. If one of the people on the panel does have some lingering doubts and they raise them, you have an opportunity to introduce another case study, another role that you did, some examples of, of, of you absolutely nailing it. So that helps. But what, mm -hmm. but what tends to happen is that the junior members of the panel don't want to ask any questions of you because for fear of letting, for fear of um, sort of, making it clear that they don't fully understand what they're talking about okay mm. um, and so what typically happens is the, the the lead of the panel asks left and right do you have any you know concerns for that about mark have any concerns and they inevitably it's instinctive they then say something positive about your presentation or your interview they'll say um no mark and oh, no 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 like you've done that's great thank you you know that, that great interview and and then, then the magic happens because you say goodbye and thank them. They go into conclave afterwards to talk about you, but nobody nobody criticizes you because they you gave them the chance to do so publicly. So it, it's a 
it's a really clever way of, of, of trying to sidestep. Um, so it, it, if you hadn't said that, that junior member who did raise a concern would say, you know, I'm not sure about the so and so, you know, but th because they were because you gave them the opportunity to um, to to criticize or, or to raise concerns in public, they tend not to do so in private. And and because the lead of the panel said something positive about your presentation as you finished it, it all rubs off. So I've, I've used it in I used it in a pitch to MasterCard successfully mm -hmm. um, when I was at a digital agency and um, and I've done it to it, it you know as an interviewee for job so sorry that was a ramble but um no, that's great. do book a do book a call because yeah. i think there'll be other things i can i can help with excellent Definitely. thanks for that mark okay pleasure uh jonathan would you like to jump off mute and say hello hi everyone thank you mark Hey, that was a killer bit of advice. I I was I was tendering for over Zoom last week on a shortlisting uh, panel, and I sure as hell could have done with chucking that one in at the end of the uh, the half an hour grilling I got. Um, so uh, hi everyone, uh, my name's Jonathan. Um, I'm based just outside of London, um, and I work in the music industry, and I run my own consultancy, um, which is very much industry focused. Um, and I also do project management as well. And I have a real range of, of clients, which sometimes has me spinning plates in terms of the diversity of, of the things I do. So just, just playing to Michael's uh, introduction there, a couple of my clients are music charities, one of which funds um, emerging artists by giving them business advice, which is where I come in. And another one I'm involved with, um, puts music into care and health settings. Um, and I've done some evaluation about the impact, the positive impact music plays on people's lives, um, particularly at key points. Um, uh, uh, and to people suffering from dementia and loneliness and isolation. So there's some really interesting academic stuff coming out of all that. But equally, um, some of my commercial projects um, are uh, front and center in, in, in the industry in terms of, of, of helping companies find new markets or um, coming to me to research particular needs, um, which hopefully delivers some impactful responses for them. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, reminded me there are two members in the UK, who, um, and I'm going to remember, forget their names, but Veronica, and I'll make a note and introduce you. Um, Farah, you've met Veronica, I think. She works at the sort of convergence of the arts and dementia. Um, so does Dahlia, doesn't she? Dahlia Halpin. Um, so I'll, I'll share a few intros because I think there's, there's common ground there, but that's great. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, last but certainly not least, um, it's time for the big top. <laughs> um, Lisa and I had a fantastic conversation a week or so ago. Um, I'm really fired up by, uh, by, by the way that she's proposition, uh, positioning the work that she does with, with the circus. So um, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? I will be happy to. I'm, <clears throat> I will start off. I hate apologizing, but I will start with an apology. This I had the dentist this morning, so this half of my face is still completely under Novocaine. <laughs> so I didn't actually have a stroke, um, but it's going to look like that right now. <laughs> Can't be helped. I apologize. Um, my name is Lisa, and the organization I am the. I've spent many, many years working in circus, working in access, working in inclusion, working in DEIAB before it even became called that, um, and bringing accessibility and children of all abilities into the joy of circus through audio description, through American Sign Language, through plain language, through neurodiver um, through sensory adaptations for neurodiversities. All of that led to an opportunity during the pandemic to create my own company, which I have done. It's called Omnium Circus. It means of all and belonging to all. And for those of you in Great Britain, um, you may have walked along the, the streets in England and seen a, seen a company called Cirque Bijou. 
and they are my inspiration. They are phenomenal. They do wonderful work and take that idea, Americanize it and make it for family audiences. Because while I love their edgy work, people in the United States will not buy a ticket to it. So I had to adapt it to the culture from which we come. Our company is 40% people with disabilities. We match the national statistics for BIPOC, gender. We really, our goal, we are 501c3 and our goal really is, true, is to unite the world through joy and through the joy of circus arts. Our performers have all abilities. Some have legs, some don't. Some are wheelchair users, some are deaf, some are blind. And that is true for our entire company. Um, we are a new company, so partnerships that we are looking for are people who might have connections to potential touring sponsors, to partnerships. Um, we're working on partnerships with larger organizations in the United States. Um, we doing, we're doing primarily um, theatrical touring venues at the moment. We started off tented, but the fiscal realities of that prove non-tenable for a beginning organization. So we have transitioned into performing arts centers, and I'm happy to say that we have an October tour of seven venues, six states, and 14 performances coming up, followed by another spring tour in 2024. We already have, I think, eight or nine venues lined up, inclusive of a three-week tour um, just off Broadway at the New Victory Theater in New York. So we're open to all thoughts, ideas, um, partnerships. We're a new company and we want to play in the same sandbox. A rising tide lifts all ships. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa. I remember we had a, we came up with a cunning wheeze, didn't we? There will be companies out there who are not um, living up to the commitment that they need to in certain areas of sustainability, inclusivity and diversity. And, um, and perhaps those might be a good target for the touring sponsorship because Hundred percent. They can they can say, look, we haven't quite got there yet in our own organisation, but we're overcompensating by um, supporting Omnium Circus. So, and we also provide um, um, consulting services so that we will help them to lift up as well. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 great. Uh, so, if anyone has any ideas or somebody's gone, something's gone ping in your head about somebody that you'd like to introduce, please do. Um, and and do have a one-to-one -one with Lisa. I don't think I've laughed quite so much for a long time. It was great. We had a great time. So I'm there we go. Not, not numb. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, somebody's just joining, which is uh, they're very late, unless they've got the, uh, the time wrong. Anyway, I think we'll do a couple of um, re uh, breakout rooms, if that's okay, because we haven't done that. It's because there are. There aren't that many of us. It, there, we won't run the risk of meeting anybody twice to the same extent. Ignacio, welcome. Um, we're just about to do some breakout sessions. Um, I don't know if you're going to turn your video on or yes, you are. There you go. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, fine, thank you. Do thank you, you. sorry for the late. I was with another time. Don't worry, what, can, can uh, I give you 30 seconds to tell everybody um, what you're doing? I know what you're doing, but um, um, you're playing the piano brilliantly. Um, so, yeah, would you like to just say hi? Say so, yeah, just say hi. I, I am in the business of the art and culture. I'm just uh, introducing myself to this world. So it would be interesting to see what others do. Uh, share in the group uh, the business that I am managing right now. There are. Uh, Three types of artists: some uh, an illustrator, an, an artist, Chilean uh, pintor, uh, painting, a uh, painting people, and a surfboard art girl that is my girlfriend that he's making with mirrors, old surfboards, uh, very beautiful pieces of art right. with mirrors in the surf surfboard. That's yeah. what I'm doing now. Thanks. Ignacio, make sure, please do put a link to those in, in the chat if you can. Okay, um, okay, okay. So I that we, can all, we can explore it. And you're a brilliant pianist, which helps. So there we go. Okay, okay. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to create some breakout rooms. Please keep your cameras on. Share the time nicely. Um, be nice, as I often say. 
It's not a pitch fest, just to see if you can get to know somebody a little bit be better to find out if you can, if there's an opportunity for a longer conversation um, or if, you're, if there's somebody that you might be able to introduce them to. So we do this at random, so, and we'll do it in twos. So there we go, Ele uh, nine rooms, uh, no. There we go, create. If you find you're on your own for any reason, please stay put because I'll send someone in, I'll send you to a different room um, and you'll get a 60 minute warning that we're going to close. So we've probably got time to do a couple of these, which would be good fun to finish off with. And then we've got the after party. Um, mm -hmm. open all rooms. There we go, um, buckle up and have fun and I'll see you back yeah. here in five minutes. Did you get the link, Ignacio? I do have to take off. Thank you so much. Okay, Lisa, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you all very much. Um, did anyone meet the same person for the second time? Hey, it worked. Fantastic. Oh, Jenny, was that a wave goodbye or a, yes, you did meet somebody. First. That was a yes. Yes, we were. I was with um, we were with Hannah and I were in a breakout room and then we were in again. Oh, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> that was random, fine. It was great. though. The gods of randomization failed us. Um, so if you have to go, thank you so much for coming. Um, we do have a bit of an after party and we've got Veronica with us. Is Veronica still with us? Yes, she is. That's great. Um, so please keep an eye out for emails. Um, thank you so much. If you get the chance to, um, to come to our next one, perhaps bring a friend, uh, a work colleague, a client, um, a supplier, um, and we can get this really rolling, which would be lovely to, to think we could have a, have a, a larger number of people. Um, the UK ones you're all, always welcome to, obviously, but I know the times aren't particularly convenient. Did anyone um, create an opportunity for a follow-up conversation? Yes, Alan, Farah and Richard, Sarah's nodding. That's all good. Fantastic. Do let us know what happens because um, we can. It, it's always good to know if, if something tangible comes out of um, an hour. Uh, I'm often asked why you don't do this face to face. And I said, well, we can't get this number of people together from all over either the States or, or, or Europe or even the UK um, any other way uh, for an hour because people just wouldn't wouldn't um, travel for it. But it, it's also the feedback we've got gotten as well during lockdown is that it's reduced the sense of isolation somewhat, which is really nice to hear. So that's great. Excellent. Um, OK, so for those of you. I mean, if you need to drift off, then do, but I'm really keen. If Veronica has made a cup of tea and prepared for her book, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> you might want to move your um, laptop, Veronica, because all we can see is your skylight and you're a silhouette at the moment. So some of you will have met Veronica before, I hope, because she comes to many of our events. So, and you were mentioned earlier as well. So, um, and you're on, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, oh no, you have to unmute yourself, I think. There we go. I think if I click the ask to, oh no, there you go. Brilliant. So Veronica, do you want to do a quick sort of 30 seconds on, a quick 30 seconds, very quick 30 seconds on the work that you do. Um, and then we're really interested to learn here where you've been this afternoon. Oh, very quickly, um, I'm an art historian. I'm writing a double biography of the two wives of G.F. Watts. Um, Yale published my biography of him um, about, ooh, about 15 years in 2004. And um, and since then, I founded Arts for Dimension. I've been running, uh, which was which was basically setting up a, a learning stream for uh, early stage dementia at arts venues, and recently working more to help people right at the onset um, of symptoms, and Farah came to talk very kindly at our, what was it, disability arts one, wasn't it, uh, about her wonderful art for the blind, um, and I 
hoping that's going to be published. Otherwise, it's available online as the A for Global Social Prescribing, the A for D um, Arts for Brain Health Debates. Um, and I've just been to Vermeer, and my goodness, I mean, I haven't actually been to it. I saw this film. I really recommend it if it's showing near where you live. It's just incredible. I mean, you really see such detail. You see, you have a bit of an understanding. It is from their points of view. There are bits that you know more that you might like, more questions you might like to ask. But to see those tiny pictures magnified, um, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Brilliant. Where was it? Seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Where was it? Oh, I, I saw it in the Olympic um, cinema in Barnes, but um, I, I think it's on probably on general release at the at where you see live from the Met, probably or Curzon Cinemas or something. Uh, okay, but it was I'm, one. I, is is that the the old Olympic Studios in Barnes? Yes, it is. Yes, I it is. used to live in Barnes. So Did I you? Know, I know it well. Yeah. Exactly where it was, and but I had to travel through the rain. It was pouring rain coming back, oh. but it was when I left. So that's why I'm looking really scruffy. But anyway, sorry. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're very welcome. Well, does anyone yeah. else does anyone else have any news that they like to share? Um, what's exciting? I was telling everyone at lunchtime uh, earlier today about the the fact that my wife bought me a drone for my birthday, <gasps> and, um, um, and it's 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 one of those ones where you wear a headset and you see what the drone sees. So it's oh, literally like flying up the river. I mean, it's quite staggering. So love it. Farah, what's what's the news? <laughs> so um, I've just had an installation of uh, five of my pieces in a place in uh, City of London, around the corner from the monument, um, and it's you actually can access it. So you remember Mark when we went to Vintner's place where yes. I had an installation. So we had to go through security and all that. So luckily in this place you don't have to go through all that. It is a corporate building. But it's minced, it's the Minster building and it's uh, down the road from Tower Hill, Tower of London and round the corner from the monument and the walkie talkie building. So it's very central. So if you're in, in town, you know, do pop in and have a look. Um, and then, yeah, there's a number of different projects coming up, um, dabbling soon in the metaverse as well. So I've been approached to be on a very, um, it, it, it's an incredible international platform with the very exclusive um, aspects of the work that I do. Um, and I can't talk any more about it yet, but Taylor Swift is on there as well. So like, <laughs> so yeah, there's loads of different things going on, but yeah. And yeah. I can't wait, Veronica, to have a chat with you because there's something that's come up that I need to let Can you we do that offline? Um, because I'm, I'm- Oh I'm yeah, not now, not now. I'm about to arrive and I haven't done anything. I've literally ran and turned on the Zoom. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that would no, be lovely. No, 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 yeah. Um, but anyway, so there's quite a few different things going on, but yeah. That's great. Mm. Excellent. Really good. Yeah, I loved it, it um, when Farah and I met at the Royal Society of Arts and and then we we popped over to the, the, the company's building that, in London that were at showing your work it was it was great it was mm. really good so, and it's and for the benefit of those who don't know London as well as we do the monument is um a big sort of tower that is in the city of London and apparently if you were to top it tipple it over the top of it would land where the great fire of London started yeah. in 1666 mm. <laughs> um it's right bang smack in the in the um the square mile that is London yeah. Um, Can I just also say, I put it on the chat, but I'd just like to say it as well, is that if anybody hasn't, they should subscribe to Alan Harrison's newsletter, um, because every, he, he, I love your insights, Alan, and it's always interesting to hear what you say, and, you know, um, you know, bringing up various things that are all, you know, intrinsic to how the arts um, uh, industry is working and how it should be, but yeah, I'd highly recommend you subscribe to Alan's newsletter. Thank you very much. That's what we're here for. Mm. And if you haven't had 15 minutes with Sarah, you you need to because you won't regret it. Um, if, have you? When are you moving to California, Sarah? Do you know yet? Um, we didn't get the visa this year, so it won't be until next October at the very earliest. So we're here for another 18 months. So another 18 months in the Bahamas. I, I know <laughs> someone's got to do it, right? So <laughs> you know, got to take that hit. But yeah, at some point we'll make it. We'll make it, and I'll go see Jenny. We're gonna have a coffee. There we go. Excellent. Tell us a little bit more about this new venture, if you're able to. I know you you might be in stealth mode, but what's what's the uh, the new venture? Oh, so it's a um, it's a 
social media tool will be an online platform um, for new businesses, uh, freelancers, uh, influencers, anybody that's trying to gain visibility from their content. Because at the moment, um, your, your post and you'll get one like or you will have three or four of your friends and family that will comment and like. Um, or you've got other people from your industry. So I've got a lot of other coaches that comment on my work and it'll just go back into the echo chamber. So the algorithm is just primed to put me back into a coaching pool and that's not where I want to be. So this idea is that you can, um, you'll match up. It's a big, big global community of other small businesses that are trying to do just this. And you can you can comment and, and like based on your preferences and your target. So it'll boost the algorithm on any social media platform, not just LinkedIn, whatever you like. And you can guarantee up to 40 comments on your page, but also um, it will be reciprocal on everyone else's, but it will be matched to your target audience rather than just you being in your own echo chamber. So it's a way of gaining visibility online, speeding it up so that you don't have to, um, you can spend time doing the work that you love rather than marketing and promotion, because that's what we're, you know, we're all technicians, we're all artists at heart, and we're not here to be you know, promoting and, and, and marketing our, our own businesses. So this is just a way, it's a go community, uh, it's community, it's connection, it's visibility, um, and it's um, sort of liberation. So you can free up that and get back to the work that you love. So, oh, and it's free, um, that's yeah. the other bit. So, yeah. Excellent, can't wait. I think I, I wrote a piece, I think recently, suggesting that digital technology had yet to start saving us time. Um, and you don't have to, You've only got to walk down the high street to realise that it's consuming our our time and our attention, and it's sort of potentially draining our creativity. And yeah. so, and because m m pretty much all marketing now, unless you're still in the world of print or radio and t and TV, it's it's all screen based. We're just staring at the and, at the screens. Um, I I came up with an idea um, called Viper. I, I don't think I mentioned it earlier. Viper um somebody challenged me somebody asked me that I, I was doing a lecture on digital marketing at university of greenwich and somebody asked me um what's next we've got google you know we've got all, we, we, you know what's next well it, it kind of came along with chat gpt a little bit i guess but um that was part of my reply i said well okay imagine a situation where you have an app called viper v-i-p-a it stands for very intelligent personal assistant and it lives in your phone or your watch and there are only three buttons on the phone on the app and they are yes no or ask me again later um, and one of the people said well give us an example of how that might work with the artificial intelligence and the and the reach into the, our digital lives to try and save us time and i said okay imagine your your phone or your watch goes ping and your viper says to you Mark, it's your mother's birthday next Friday and you haven't yet bought her a, a, a present. I've checked out her Facebook feed and it looks like she's really into crochet at the moment. I've been on Amazon and I found a really well discounted starter pack for crochet. Would you like me to buy it for her and send it to her home address with a note from you? Right. That's that's the, that's the Viper at work. And you, all you have to do is decide yes, no, or ask me again later. Um, and then in a business context, I suggested that you could turn up at a conference with a camera on your lapel that your app, the Viper app, can use. And retinal scanning is now accurate to 200 meters. And facial recognition is pretty, is pretty powerful as well. So what the Viper will do at this conference It'll scan everybody's faces, compare them to their LinkedIn profile images, look through their LinkedIn um, profile and let you know who in the room you should probably go and talk to. So it's this kind of um, and then then they said, yeah, that's great. But is there anything else you can do with that? I said, yeah, you can get the, you can get people's vipers to talk to each other. So, for example, in a social environment, if I said, let, look, I want all of us to meet again in three weeks time, I can ask my Viper to connect with your Vipers and your Vipers have have access to your calendars um, so that the, the Vipers do all the work um, and, and come back and say, look, this is the time that most people can do. Is that okay? Yes, no, or ask me again later. And it's not until we have that kind of, and, and by the way, the technology to do all that is already here. 
Um, it's just that nobody has has pulled it all together in that kind of very intelligent personal assistant kind of way, not to that depth. So if you see something like that out there and it's not me, I'll be livid. But um, because, <laughs> because it, it it started here first. Anyway, I digress. I digress. So, but it, you know, we that's part of the problem, Sarah, is that we don't have have time. And if we, who was it? Somebody in our meeting earlier was saying they wish they could clone themselves um, because they, you know, it was Farrah. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much going on. We just need another. I don't need an assistant. I just need another one of me. Um, <laughs> so that sort of virtual VI, that Viper could, you know, if robotic, bring robotics in and you've got somebody who can go out there and do all these things for you while you sit and be creative. Um, the, the, that's the one thing that, um, there was a great talk last year on, Alistair Frost did a talk last year. I think it's on the website if you want to go and have a look. Um, if it's not and you want it, let me know because I can, I've got a, another link. But he taught us the five things that, can, that we will always be able to do better than computers. And uh, and it was great. And one of them I've, I've, I've looked into a lot since called Shoshan. It's a Buddhist concept and it means approaching a subject with the mind of a child. And it, uh, I loved it because we computers can't dumb down themselves. They're that they're smart and we've made them smart, but they can't stop being smart. Um, whereas we can approach things with a, an open mind and and prevent our preconceptions limiting the options for that concept. Because if, if, if you're a, an expert in a certain subject and you approach a challenge or an opportunity, your options are, are limited because you don't allow yourself to think freely and openly enough to, to find. And my, my wife is a walking example of this, which is she's an extremely advanced Excel user. She uses um, Power BI and Power Automate. By the way, go and look at Power Automate Microsoft if you haven't. It's incredible. Um, the, and she will often ask me to, to help her solve a problem. And I'm not an Excel user. And the reason she does that is she has to, ex because I'm daft and stupid in those circumstances, she has to explain the problem in such a simple way that while doing so, she realizes the solution. <laughs> um I, i'm i'm just the, the 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 trigger for that but yeah so we need yeah digital will help us but it's 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 still we're still on the up we're still going uphill with digital at the moment i can't wait until um we start rolling down and we can all start as you as you want to do sarah do more of the things that we're meant to do as mm -hmm. humans i'm oh, sorry i'm i'm stealing all the airtime. does anyone else got any news if you have to slip off then by all means do and thank you for coming but anyone else got any news they'd like to share i was just going to tell you that i didn't know that you were a uh, a spreadsheet muse uh, I must... <laughs> how, how proud i am of you of doing that <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i'm a spreadsheet muse i love that um <laughs> i can't i can't you know i i'm the sort of person who who gets a calculator out and does the sum on the calculator and then puts the result in the in the spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> I'm not an advanced Excel user, I'm afraid, but, ah. but yeah, have a look at Power Automate. It's quite incredible. It can tell your computer to do things um, in a series and it captures key, you record the keystrokes or the way, it, the way, so you can tell it to, for example, you could tell it to go to six websites and scrape the latest news. <sighs> in a file um, i'm discovering that as, as i get older that we are becoming uh a, a society in which things are easier and we are we are more redundant and uh yes. so it's, <laughs> it's a it's it's i'm not afraid of it but i i do mourn a little bit for the the idea that you know Farah wants to clone herself and while that would be fabulous for the world um I, there was, you know, Thomas Edison worked by himself, you know, uh, Vermeer worked by himself. Um, Alan, I was joking, by the way, I was joking. I'm not up for it. So if anyone comes and approaches me. Oh, no, no, no. Alan, I'm joking. <laughs> but only if we get to call your, co your clone Dolly after the sheep. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Veronica, you have a hand up. Ah, oh, I'll lower it. Um, I was wanting to ask, um, I was intrigued by Jenny's Minuet Media. What, what is that? Sure, thank you for asking. Yes, uh, that is the name of my, my company, my agency. So I work as a freelance digital marketer. I also hire subcontractors to help other small businesses and performing arts organizations uh, for digital marketing, uh, you know, building organic media, paid advertising, uh, building up funnels, email marketing, whatever is needed. So but it's not music. It's not music. It's just a, you use the, the word. I use the word because it meant something to me. Um, it was, a, you know, minuet is a dance in three. So it, it is something that it, it's attuned with with artists and with performing arts organizations. So that's why I named it minuet media. Yeah. Um, but yes, in my, think, my music. I just wondered if you were singing, uh, involved with um... Uh, a musical dance or something like that. <clears throat> no, well, I do brand it as that. Yes, I say I say it's the um, song and dance of of marketing. So that's Lovely. that's what I help other businesses do is is, uh, is navigate through that and find the successful steps in order to reach the audience that they're desiring and turn them into loyal customers. So whatever Lovely. that might be. Yes. Lovely. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I'm not sure if we've got a meeting in the book, Jenny, yet, but we should have one because when I'm not running the Arts and Culture Network, I, I host one-to-one -one brand discovery uh, workshops for startups. Um, awesome. Uh, um, and I don't do any of the things that you just listed. So, um, so <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm at the sharp end um, at, with, with ideas and words. And, and then if anybody, if that needs to then be communicated um, further, downstream we should we should have a conversation so uh, sure uh, yeah absolutely that sounds great yeah. i think we have a, a meeting next week but i'm i'm on the way to uh to southern california in orange county so we'll just have to move it but i'll find another time on your calendar yeah yeah by all means it's easier we use calendly um which is a yes. blessing and a curse because if you i think if you move a, a, a meeting in outlook and don't tell calendly it cancels it and cancels mm -hmm. the zoom so um if you do have to do that just cancel it in Calendly and everywhere, and we can we can arrange another one, which would be good. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Those, yeah, the one to ones are great fun. The other thing that I'm finding extremely oh, Veronica, you've, sorry, you've got I just to left go. you a message. I'm about to be invaded, so I have to go. We'll I have just wanted to say hello. Have a, lovely, have a lovely book club, and we must Thank meet you. again and talk about Barnes. Are you still in Barnes? Do you live in? Yeah, Barnes I'm in Putney. Or? Yes, I'm in Putney. Oh, okay. Yes, I used and to live very close to the Olympic Studios, so we should we should meet up. Lovely. And I'll, 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 I'll send you an email. Bye. Lovely to, lovely to see you. Bye. Brilliant, brilliant meeting. Thank you, Veronica. And now, of course, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say, which often happens to me. It's uh, It'll come back to me in a moment. Um, what were we talking about? Did the, did the digital stuff? Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to ask. So one of the, um, one of the things I do in that brand discovery workshop is, is help people create a new category in which they can be first there's there's a lovely um uh, book called the 32 immutable laws of marketing by jack reese and um one of them is if you can't be first in your category create a new category and um and it's it's helped in those those workshops uh, branding uh, personal brand workshops or um or, or business branding um the dogs are kicking off from here then. No, that's enough. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, I mean, when, when I introduce my wife to somebody, well, if she introduces herself to somebody, she's, she'll say, I'm an accountant. And often, sadly, people will lean away, you know, rather than lean. Um, but when I introduce her, I, I, I refer to her as a forensic accountant, which she does. Um, and so suddenly she's Sherlock Holmes and people lean in and ask more questions. So um, another, I, the other thing I suggested she said was, uh, with somebody said to her at an event, what do you do for a living? I said, tell them you count other people's money um, and, and try and have that kind of, um, get, get somebody laughing or smiling at the start of your conversation and it will last much longer and be much more, more meaningful. Um, with apologies to those who might have heard it earlier on, that a friend of mine is an osteopath, um, and his problem when introducing himself um, uh, was that half of the people he met had no idea what an osteopath did. 
so they wouldn't ask any more questions. Um, so he now introduces himself as a preventative osteopath and people are going, oh, what's one of those? And they can have a further conversation without giving away the fact that they don't, um, they, they don't know what he does. So the, the, the workshop, with, I did a speed 10 minute workshop at, earlier today around the three things that I would advise people to try and be in order to be as part of that. And that's what makes you different, what makes you better and what makes you remarkable so that you are noticed, remembered and talked about. Um, and it's, it was really interesting. Um, it's been really interesting working with people trying to capture that for them. Because as Seth Godin tells us, if you're not different, you're invisible. If people don't think you're the best, they'll be promiscuous. And if you're not remarkable, people won't talk about you. And it's finding something that you can talk about. Um, so I'd be interested, Jenny, to know, I mean, you have some competition. Uh, I mean, all, we all have competition, but um, I remember when I sold my first website in 1994, um, I wasn't selling, the, uh, I wasn't competing with anyone. I was just trying, uh, my job was to persuade somebody to have a website instead of a brochure back in the mid nineties. And if I could persuade them, they would book it with me. Um, things have changed. You know, there are an awful lot of web design agencies, digital agencies, creative agencies out there. How do you mind me asking, how, do, what makes you so special? I don't mean that rudely, by the way. Um, it's, it's a question I often ask. If, if someone were to ask you what makes your organization different from any of the others that I could work with, have, how do you address that now? Yeah, I, I would say definitely the the authentic piece. I, I am who I am because I'm an artist and I connect with with other uh, business owners who are artists and entrepreneurs um, and also those performing arts organizations. I really understand uh, from artist perspective and an audience perspective uh, how to reach out and engage with those those audience members. So whether it's you know, in a digital format, um, you know, on a website, it could just be a website, it could be your brand, it could be also engagement on social media, doing organic social media, um, engaging in your followers and kind of turning them into lo loyal customers by building a funnel, um, doing a lot of automated tools as well. So these are all implementation strategies, but at the very end of it, I align with, you know, those that I work with. So I, I pick and choose who, who I work with, um, you know, and I don't, I don't necessarily go after those that are trying to really scale and, you know, try to like make their, their online presence very fancy, you know, at the top level, I'm not going after like a, you know, a type theaters, um, in, in the US. It's really just entrepreneurs, small business owners, and building a business. Also female entrepreneurs yeah. is a really, you know, direct niche that I that I look for. So yeah, those that's, artists that's, that are transitioning into building their own business. That's that's very wise. It's, it's very smart. Um, Seth Godin said, uh, Godin said something recently that was like standing on a rake for me. He said, find your smallest viable audience and become the best option for it. Um, I had to read that twice. I'd find your smallest viable audience and become the best option for it you know okay got it um it's so smart um i translated that into a concept i call minimalist marketing um where you can only put i um you have three imagine you have three buckets in front of you in the first one goes your your flagship product or service or perhaps even one aspect of it in the second bucket goes the smallest viable audience for that product or service and in the third bucket goes one channel through which to reach those people. Um, and you set KPIs and targets and you don't change that until you hit them. Um, it's a way of forcing you to sell them smart, the, the best possible product to the people who are most likely to buy it where they live. And it, it, arguably we should all be doing this anyway, but many of us don't. Um, it's, it's an interesting, well, I'm, I probably should do a, a longer talk on that. Um, thank you very much, Jenny. Yeah. Um, I'm conscious of the time. Um, I'm so sorry, but I have to dash. We're going to yeah, go. I, we're going to close yeah. down now anyway, okay. so right. um, so that everybody can have their afternoon or their evening or their <laughs> breakfast or their morning. But thank you all so much for for joining me. Do please connect if we're not on LinkedIn. I've put my all my contact details are in the chat. There'll be we'll we'll put some of some of this on video on the um on the website and link to it from LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and I'll do a post and perhaps you could um share some of your experiences and we'll um um what's that right date for your diary before we go hang on
So we're looking at if it's if we do the third um, Thursday of the month, we're looking at that's April. That's not right. It would be the 18th of May at 1 p.m. EST. Did I get the times right, by the way? Because us Brits are useless at American time zones. Um, uh, speak for yourself, are... Mark. Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I am. I'm rubbish. So we'll we'll reconvene at one p.m. Um, on Thursday, the eighteenth of May. Um, and thank you again for coming, and and enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening. It's a lovely. Time. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Mark. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Bye. So nice meeting everyone. <laughs>